Thank you for being with us here on Court TV Live. I'm Julie Grant. Welcome back. So we're in the romance novelist murder trial in Portland, Oregon. And right now on the stand, we've got a police officer who's talking about how the defendant came down to the crime scene uh, and they met each other. This is the police witness there in the courtroom, Cassandra Wells. And um, she's being cross-examined right now. And one thing that we were talking about in the studio, and I wanted to bring my guest in on this, the Honorable Kimberly Bando is joining me. She's also a practicing criminal defense attorney. Uh, when we were hearing Julia Janae's report about how Nancy Brophy was staring at Julia and giving Julia that uncomfortable, uh, you know, thousand yard stare, she's kind of doing it to this witness too. You were saying as we were watching, and I thought it'd be great for you to share with us your thoughts with our viewers on how jurors notice these things. Yeah, so I was paying particular attention after she mentioned that, and I was like, she's literally staring down the police officer, and it's awkward for me watching it, so I can only imagine how intense it is in the courtroom and the jury sitting there, and they're watching her demeanor. It's not helping the case of a grieving, um, wrongly, falsely accused wife, and I'm staring down everybody in the room. It's giving vibes of like, oh wow, she really is scary. Right. And you were saying how much you, you like uh, the defense attorney who's doing the cross right now. She's very smooth, has a really kind way about her with the jury. If you were her um, tapping into your experience doing criminal defense practice, would you kind of pull her aside outside of the viewing of the jury and say, okay, knock it off, look at your paper or something. Uh, yes, yeah. I would tell mm -hmm. her to just focus on her paper, mm -hmm. pretend to take notes, write down whatever you want to write down, and I would actually ask her to put her mask on so that I, that would prevent her from looking so like, to, to block that away and get the attention off her face so they're not reading so much of her demeanor, which obviously is not reading well with the rest of the world. Ooh, that's really good. So depending on the situation, right, if she had uh, uh, maybe a better expression on her face, then maybe it'd be okay right. to be maskless, but here you would go with it. Interesting, Judge uh, Judge Kimberly Bando. Thank you for weighing in there. Let's take a look at some more of this testimony. Again, we're talking about the day that Nancy Brophy came to the crime scene. Do you have radioed that she was there or notified someone? Um, maybe. It just depends. I mean... Potentially, I, because c communication from the officer um, that's at 17th and Jefferson, it's possible that I said it over the air that the victim's wife is arriving, Nancy, and she can come in as I was walking there. But someone was notified, I assume, to let detectives know that, that she was present and to come talk to her. Yes. And... I think you sort of answered this earlier, but why did you give Ms. Brophy a hug? Um, because I knew um, that her husband had just been murdered and she arrived and started crying. And I felt like sad. I mean, compassion, like, I mean, it's not the first time I've hugged somebody during this job and I mean, I've cried on this job before in uniform multiple times. Um, not at this thing, but it's just a way to show people that, like, we're here and we care. And um, at the time that you were briefing the detectives that morning, did you provide to them a potential suspect or any information regarding a suspect at that time? No, we had no idea who a suspect would be. Thank you. That's all the questions I have. Hey, uh, may this witness be excused? Uh, yes, Your Honor. All right. It can be excused. <laughs> and we are going to take our lunch break a little early uh, with the plan of being back on the record at 1.30. For the attorneys, uh, Ms. Liu will talk to the jury about when you should be back, but we'll be in our lunch recess. Okay. Uh, we will go off the record and we will go into recess. All rise. All right, so there we have it. The jury gets to go on their lunch break. So much to unpack. We have a great guest to help me do that. Joining me in the studio, the Honorable Kimberly Bando. She's also a practicing criminal defense attorney. She does that private work as well as serving uh, at the magistrate court here in Atlanta, Georgia. And also she's a former prosecutor. So um, taking this all in, 
Uh, today felt like a, a big day. I, I know, you know, I, watching it, I felt that way, and our viewers on, on Twitter who are engaging felt that way. Tell me your thoughts of kind of where we are in the trial. What are you seeing as someone who knows what it's like to practice on literally all sides of, of the court, the bench, and then uh, from both sides where the adversaries are? Right now, I definitely think the prosecution is, is they have tipped the scale over, and I'm wondering how is the defense going to overcome that compelling testimony that she knew how her husband was killed and no one told her. Like, it's just, I don't know what explanation that could be provided to help me. I mean, it could have been anything. And you knew exactly how he was killed. I really want to see how they're going to overcome that, that obstacle, because it's huge. Right. Like, they kind of, it's almost like, okay, we rest, <laughs> you oh, know, yeah. at this point. That was a moment. You're absolutely right. Uh, that was the moment of the day, without a doubt, the biggest moment so far in this case. And the way it came in, I have to hand it to that prosecutor just masterfully, in the way he asked that question to her, he got that information out. And that witness so sincerely, you know, the victim's mother, your heart breaks for her. I, I mean, just the way she answered so authentically, uh, that jury had to be left with that feeling of, oh my gosh, how would she know? And and we're going to get an explanation from her, Judge. We learned in the opening statements, defense counsel promised Nancy Brophy is going to be testifying. What are your thoughts on that decision, please? I think after today, that she should seriously reconsider. If I'm the prosecutor, that's going to be my first question. Ma'am, how did you know how your husband was murdered? How? How did you know the manner? Only the killer would know the manner. Like, I would just, oh, I would just have a field day and go in. I would be salivating. So that if I'm like the Lord, my, we're going to have to reconsider this, you getting on the stand, because they're going to have a field day with that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, and I think that also goes to something, you know this well, Judge, as a trial lawyer, you never want to promise something you can't deliver, right? And like, I've seen it happen. I've seen attorneys, you know, you promise something, it doesn't. And that's one of those things I'm, I was thinking, why would you promise that? I mean, I, I get why, but I also think it's too risky to do because of moments like this we saw today. Uh, your thoughts on the lawyering, please. And I, that's exactly what I was going to say. Yeah, she yeah. has a great attorney who's going to be spinning her wheels about what can she do to recoup it. And she's gonna have to deal with it face on if she's gonna put it on the stand. You can't let the prosecutor bring that back up. You have to bring it back up and find some reasonable explanation as to how you knew that was the manner of the death. And she has a great attorney, so we'll see if she's gonna either keep her word and put it on the stand or, you know, be like, hey, we don't have anything to prove here, the state does. Exactly. You know, speaking of the great lawyering, there was a moment um, I wanted to let our viewers in on this where you remarked to me, Judge, as we were all watching very intently, right as, as the mom got on the stand, as Karen Brophy was up there and she was starting to get really sad and you, she used those words, I was devastated when she gets the call from Nancy Brophy that her son is dead. And when, when you were watching, we saw how there was not an objection per se, but defense counsel got up and said, Your Honor, we have a matter before the court. She didn't say objection. You know, she was careful to weigh her words. And, and, and you said to me, you know, they're disrupting the flow of this because that was getting so good. Yeah, I mean, I was literally like this with mom, like, and what happened next? And then what happened? And so you don't want the jury to get that engaged and, and involved with her and, and her story because then you're sympathetic and you murdered this woman's poor son. And so they had their brain up because it was too moving and compelling and that's just a strategy that that any good attorney would do was ha we have to stop this yeah exactly disrupt the flow I mean I've definitely done it before I've definitely <laughs> when I knew I didn't have an objection I got up there and I said something you know if, if nothing else kind of the joke is like relevance you know it's always that's always something you can yeah, kind definitely. of hang your hat on uh, and good trial attorneys will do that I've had it done to me and I've thought oh I know, I know why you did that because I was <laughs> picking up steam uh, boy oh boy this case is is really really something. Um, you know, sitting there, in, any final thoughts on what Nancy Brophy and her team ought to be thinking about at this juncture? At this juncture, they're going to have to figure out to, to, to divest the prosecution's mm -hmm. motive about money, that it wasn't money, she wasn't there, here's her alibi. So they just, they have a lot of work ahead of them, a long road. Yeah. Judge Kimberly Bando, always a pleasure to have your insight and expertise. Thank you for coming back in the studio. It's great to see you back in here.